Welcome everyone to a second session of More in Common Conversations, conversations with Bishop Kevin and uh, Dennis Reed. I am Sandy Milien and uh, welcome to this evening of uh, an informal conversation and reflection as we uh, reflect on our call as followers of Jesus and uh, themes and questions related to our common life here in the Diocese of Bethlehem. Um, yeah, if you have any questions throughout the, the, the conversation tonight, feel free to put them in the chat. Feel free to also share this transmission, this live uh, Facebook live with others on your profiles so that they can also join us uh, in this conversation. Um, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Dennis to open us up in this conversation. Thanks, Sandy. Uh, I'm excited to be here with the two of you just anyway, but especially after a really good session on scripture. So we were, we called session two, Paul's little letter, Philemon's big impact. And um, Philemon's one of those tiny little letters you can read in 90 seconds, and yet it's so easy to flip over it in the New Testament, and we barely get it in our lectionary anyway on Sundays. And so we thought we need a good session on scripture and how that sort of connects to our common life. And um, with with Tony and Sydney and Bruce, we're so grateful for the way that they sort of had this really enjoyable and deep conversation uh, sort of on behalf of our diocese together to talk about some of the, the challenging aspects of that letter and its history of interpretation and what it means as Episcopalians to come together and to interpret scripture in any setting. And, you know, we kind of realized that was that was such a good conversation. I'm so glad we have it. And at the same time, one of the great things about reading scripture is that when we come to it together, um, God puts that in our hearts so that we can't just stay there. Right. So often I think God reorients kind of our perception of the world so that it means that when we read scripture, we then go out into the world changed as people and, and for people for ministry to do new things. And so um, the thing I'm excited to talk to, talk to you and everyone else about today and, and hear people's questions is, that's all well and good, but what do we do next? Mm. And how do how does a two thousand year old letter connect to the things that we're struggling with today when it comes to um, issues of justice or when it comes to issues of racial reconciliation and and questions that we might have when it comes to that work? So, um, as any time when we when we study scripture, um, it doesn't happen in a vacuum, and we get to sort of move from that conversation to something larger and greater and involving more people. So. That's, that's the exciting thing for me of, of how do we take faithfully what we've listened to um, and take it to the next level or a new level. So that's what I'm excited about today. Oh, thank you, Dennis. Um, well, I think it, it will be nice to maybe start talking about, um, I guess, relationships, right? I think one of the important things that we see, and we, we invite everyone here watching this now and later to go back to your Bibles and go and read the letter of Philemon. It's very short, as Denny has said, but here we see a very intimate relationship, right, between uh, Paul and Philemon. And I, I think that um, that is an important example, right, of, of, um, of our common life, the, 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 the closeness that we share with our brothers and sisters, that we should share with our brothers and sisters, no matter where they come from, what they look like. Um, and when I think about that, I, I, I wonder if maybe, you know, thinking about in general, if, if we can think about um, those close relationships we have with other people, authentic relationships we have with other people, what are some of those, those characteristics that we see that we share with those people that we see Paul also share with, with Philemon uh, in this letter? Uh, for example, the, the tenderness, right? There is not, uh, to me, right? I see that uh, the way the words that he uses, they're not um, accusative. I don't know if that's a word in English, excuse my language uh, barriers, but <laughs> he's not accusing him of anything. It's, they're not harsh. That's the word I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brain. They're not harsh, but they're, they're out of love. Um, and that's what um, that, that's what drew me first in, in, in that letter. Um, I don't know if, if, if any of you connect with that, maybe the bishop, I don't know, what, what, was, what were your first reactions to, to that relationship between Paul and Philemon? Yeah, um, thanks, Sandy. I, you know, I keep going back to the text and, and 
And he's sending Anisimus back with the wish that Philemon will accept him no longer as a slave, but as a beloved brother. Mm. You know, he's a brother now. And, and it just, it, it kind of goes back to this. I, I think the words he uses are, receive him as you would receive me. And, and it's a dramatic example of Paul's way of thinking about the change, uh, the change of values, the change of the way you look at the world, the way you look at relationships um, that's brought about by Christ, that's brought about um, through baptism and through this changed relationship and who we are. And um, I want to just throw out an example. It's, it's one of my uh, favorite stories from, uh, from COVID time, but uh, I, I received a phone call from a parishioner in one of our congregations who just was really struggling um, with a few things that are going on and, and just laid it out for me. Um, some might even say, let me have it. Um, and I remember when I got the call, um, you know, like anytime we've got a difficult moment, my, my first instinct was just to just get anxious or, 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 or to think of my defense or, or kind of put an attack together. And, and yet our relationship with Christ reminds us that we are all brothers, mm -hmm. um, brothers, sisters, siblings. So I, I called them, you know, picked up the phone and I called them and didn't pick up. There was, it went to voicemail, but the voicemail was full. So I called the <laughs> next day and same thing, didn't pick up, the voicemail was full. So I did this, I must've called 50 times. Mm -hmm. um, never got through. And, and then I went to the congregation for a visitation. And, and sure enough, he was there. And I pulled out my phone and I said, I don't think your phone's working. And, and I, I dialed the number because I had it right there. And I called him and, and he said, Oh, gosh, yeah, my phone is broken. It's not. And I said, because I, I wanted to talk to you. And, mm -hmm. and, it, you know, that's how it began. And then, and then we entered into worship. And then, and then, you know, there was a time for the sign of peace mm. to reach out to a brother. And then there was time afterwards um, where we were able to reconnect again. And, and the warmth that I think shifted that moment was the fact we both realized that we were brothers. Mm. And that was so important that we could start there and then we could work on what our differences were. Yeah. Yeah, that's so good, right? I think, and, and, and I think that's what Paul does too, right? In a way, he, he continues to, to, he wants, not continues, he wants to have a conversation with a brother. He yeah. wants to, to have um, an honest conversation about something that may feel uncomfortable to, I guess, both of them because of the context where they are, who they are, um, um, what they've done, their, their different lives and the people involved. But I just want to talk to my brother. I just want to talk to my sister. And knowing that we, what we share in common is the love of Christ for each other and for the common good. So that, that, that's what takes us there, right? That's our, our, common, our commonality. It's that love for each other that, that comes through God and through Christ. Um, but I, I like that. I like that example of, of continuing to seek those people, our brothers and sisters, no matter what the situation may be, no matter the, the, the topic that may be. Uh, that may be, you know, may cause some friction between us. Yeah. Yeah. Helps when you have the phone receipts too, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Um, but um, as we think about um, our brothers and sisters, one of the things that Dr. Lewis brings up in, in the interview, and we welcome everybody to watch that on our YouTube page, we'll add the link later on, is, and I think Dennis and I were talking about it the other day, is um, who are these people, who are these other mm -hmm. people that we call brothers and sisters, right? And when I think about that, I think about people that are immigrants, right? Who are my brothers and sisters? I think of people that are uh, of different nationalities, but beyond that, I think of people that, in, that are in our churches, in our, in our, in our, in our uh, parishes that are, um, just like us may look like you and I and are struggling uh, with, um, with violence in their households, are struggling with um, 
uh, situations economically or, or health-wise. Um, those other people that uh, we, we, we don't even know their situation are our brothers and sisters too. And I think one of the ways that Paul in this letter is, 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 is reaching out is through love, no matter what. No matter what you may look like, they may look like, those other people, those other people that I call Christians, they are my brothers, my sisters, um, whatever they want to define as, right? Non-binary uh, folks out there as well. Uh, yeah. they, they, no matter the situation, they are, they are part of the family. They are part of the family of Christ, um, and we should be we should welcome them no matter what. Uh, but um, I don't know if that brings anything to you, Dennis. You know, with our conversation yesterday, or or the interview with Dr. Lewis. So it, yeah, it does. There's two things actually. One one I hadn't thought of till just now, and it's been a while. Um, so so Tony Lewis was our um, uh, professor at VTS, and and we we much loved and. Uh, much beloved. And um, another professor at VTS, I remember, called us out once as seminarians because we were, you know, younger and snarky and we thought everything was funny. And and um, we were having some offhand conversation about like different denominations. And it wasn't particularly a pleasant one. Like, I don't look back at this fondly. And he kind of walked over to this big group of us and said, yeah, um, you can't say that. And, and we all kind of got quiet. And he said, you can't say that because you're talking about your family. Um, wow. and I don't remember who exactly we were putting down, but it wasn't a charitable word. And we just kind of thought, I'll never forget that, like that there was something to this idea of, um, in a way that we kind of thought was simple and he saw as profound, like, yeah, you can't, you just can't do that. That's, that's not all right. And mm -hmm. the other thing that makes me think of that's related to that is, um, if I'm a baptized person and you're a baptized person, that more than anything limits our interactions in a way um in such a way that means i can't really respond to you with anything but virtue and grace mm -hmm. and if i don't i'm doing it wrong and that doesn't just hurt me it hurts the whole body it hurts the whole family it hurts it hurts every part of christ's body is to use some sort of paul language there um so i'm i've i've become more much more sensitive to the idea of um my relationship with god before anything is is communal instead of personal is um asks great things of me before it makes me comfortable um and 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 challenges me before it lets me off easy and uh, if ever so I, I i love the idea of the more we think about again something we hear for 10 seconds in scripture in philemon and you can have this such a bigger conversation about you know what is christian behavior what does, um, what are our responsibilities to each other, our world, our community, um, uh, all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm, I, I would like to think I'm, I'm much more sensitive to that now, but I, I'm sure that every day there can be a surprise too. <laughs> yeah. And Dennis, uh, when you said that, I was again reminded, you know, in this particular text, you know, Paul is he's writing to the head of a Christian home church, which, you know, I, I just, I love that whole notion. We could unpack that whole notion of home church and what that means. And there's such an intimacy in the thinking of that, you know, unlike our, our big kind of expansive building. Sometimes there's, this is a house church and this is a most likely a wealthy individual who's leading this, this particular entity. And he's writing as a prisoner, you know, so Paul's a prisoner writing about the freedom of a slave. So you wonder, and I don't know, you know, what did the experience of, of, of being a prisoner, how did that transform Paul's understanding and thinking about, about the world, mm -hmm. about relationships, about uh, who was in and who was out? Um, and and we, are, we are all relational people. I mean, our our experiences, our life experiences can be so transformative. Um, and, and I often find myself just trying to take a step back and say, so what, what are the experiences of this individual? What, what is the background of this moment that is making someone respond or reach out or not reach out in the way that they do? 
Um, and, and then, you know, there's the self-examination. And I'm sure Paul had plenty of time to, <laughs> to look into his own heart and his own living and loving and say, you know, where, where do I need to put my energy? Where do I need um, to build the beloved community that we, we often talk about? How, how can I be a part of that? And then, you know, kind of what are my blind spots in this? Where, where do I miss it? Um, and who do I need to help me um, to be more of who Christ is calling me to be? Right. Right. And, and, and the importance of value, valuing the, the, the diverse experiences of people, right? And in the moment the, the, of those experiences, Paul wasn't always a prisoner. He was, or, or whatever, right? He was uh, walking around, talking to people, teaching people, um, but um, valuing that relation, that experience in the moment and seeing um, that God is at work there. And mm -hmm. that is, and God is, 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 is showing God's love, God's power, God's everything um, through that experience, that my experience is not less than because of my situation because of my last name, because of the language I speak, because of uh, where I'm at in my life right now or where I may be tomorrow. But God is still there and I am love no matter what. Yeah. And that my people around me should, um, where the call is, the choices are love me or, but no, the, 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 the thing to do is to love others, no matter what, uh, what they're going through, what the situation may be. Uh, but I like that point, Bishop, about the, the experiences. I wonder, right, I wonder what, what, what was that, that moment for Paul? What was it, what was he thinking, going through, reflecting on to write such a personal letter to somebody about that specific issue, topic, right? Mm -hmm. You, you were talking earlier about relationships. And I think for Paul, uh, Paul had a massive change of heart. Um, I'm not sure it was a conversion, but it was a massive change of heart when, when he encounters the risen Jesus. Mm. And, and in, a in a relationship that Jesus had, but Paul hadn't yet. And what, what's great about that moment and what I think Paul then offers to Philemon is the same exact thing. Jesus shows Paul the truth and then lets him deal with the consequences. Like that is what a great lesson for relationship. Like my best friends are the ones who tell me the truth when I need to hear it and then trust me enough to go deal with it in a way that's appropriate. And like also ministry um, and also listening like Bishop to your point, like of, of, of different people's experiences. Like if we, you know, how often do we pray for prisoners, but do we, do we go and listen to them and visit them and, and hear right. their experience of what church is or what right. God is doing in their life? Maybe some do. Um, I can't say I have with any recency. Um, maybe I ought to, you know, like maybe there's some learning there of, of from experience, from, from truth, from, you know, Sandy, to your point of like where, where God is in that moment. And, um, and then having the trust of one another and the belief in one another, not, not naively so that love's going to fix it all, but just to say, um, this is worth trying. It's yeah. worth trying to love and trust one another enough in our common ministry, in our common life, to try that instead of anything else, because we haven't. Right. Yeah. And, and the, the, the listening part too, because we don't know people's stories until we hear them. There can be prisoners, there can be people going through situations that, for example, prisoners that were wrongfully convicted. They want people to listen to them, listen to their story, listen to their struggle. Um, and, um, and we should we should be showing them what 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 that is, what what God has done in our lives, the love God has shown us, and show that to them as well. But I wonder why is it so hard? Going to back to what you said, Dennis, about people closest to you telling you the truth and being honest and um, challenging you. Why is it so hard for us, especially as followers of Jesus in our churches, to tell the truth about the gospel, a gospel about justice? And, and telling our brothers and sisters that are sitting next, next to us that we know sometimes don't say or do things that are beneficial for people that look like me. Why is it so hard for that to be a conversation, a, 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 love, a loving conversation, a conversation where two, Christ, two baptized people, two followers of Jesus who have said yes to this journey, 
why why is it why is it hard you know why why do we why can't we get there if we trust that that the community is a safe space right where we gather um well is it a safe space for everybody mm. well, that's another question <laughs> yeah. right right yeah uh so is it a safe place to gather i mean that that I think you're starting to get, Sandy, to kind of to the core of what we often struggle with is, you know, trusting, you know, trusting in another. Um, and, and particularly, I think when, when one's in leadership um, and they take on tremendous responsibilities um, to, to be present, to listen, and to somehow try to create a space and environment where all voices are heard. Um, but it's, it's, it's really hard work to do in community. You know, we, we uh, start with your family. I mean, you know, forget it, push church over here for a minute. I mean, just ask the question about how hard it is for us to live together in our, in our families, whether that's just kind of the core, the, the people that we live with each day, um, brothers, sisters, siblings, whatever those relationships may be. Um, and, and then, you know, extend it out. Where, where is there fracture kind of currently in my life? You know, who, who, are, the, who are the people that if they show up on my phone, um, I don't want to answer that call. Um, you know, where, where are those places that um, maybe in our past where, where there's darkness? Um, brokenness and 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 it's really impacted our living and our loving today mm -hmm. so um i love the way paul kind of kind of calls them to go deeper and i think the words are something like he off he he i think raymond brown says he makes an offer that he can't refuse <laughs> to think deeply about welcoming his brother in christ i mean it's like um it's it gets to the core of who we are you know, we want to be loved. We need the love of others. Um, we want to live in relationships that are nurturing and sustaining. Um, and then, and then I move to community. I mean, we need we need congregations. We need people around us who also love us, just support us. We'll be there um, if times are hard in the ways that that we need that. Um, and 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 I. I personally feel that this letter is a reminder to me uh, of how much I need to be in relationship, how much I need that love that Christ offers us, and how much I need to share that love with others. I don't know if that resonated, but um, I think it's a call to go deeper. I mean, you're describing a community I'd want to be a part of, you know, I mean, in, in terms of like, none of that sounded easy. Right. Yeah. I mean, none of that, none of that is simple. Um, but I don't think that's what ministry is either. I, I think, I think we're called to be vulnerable, to have conversations and uh, that, and, and more importantly, actions that lead to a, say, a space that maybe we could admit at one point was not safe for all people, but yeah. is becoming more so in ways that um, does change who we are and changes what we know about God and each other. Um, and anytime that happens, it's not going to be something that 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 goes well, <laughs> or 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 simply or without, um, without difficulty. And Sandy, to your point of like, why isn't why why can't this happen? And why isn't this easier? It's just, um, it's I would think I would think because we follow someone who says you have to lose your life to find it. Yeah. You know, like and 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 to do no, who wants to do that? Nobody who wants to do that, right? <laughs> Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I hear that. And um, to even go back to the to to that point of, of, you know, things, this is not simple. Onesimus, it wasn't simple. It wasn't a simple decision for him to say, I'm going back. Yeah. Ooh. I would have been like, no, stay. <laughs> <laughs> you crazy. <laughs> because Paul doesn't force um uh Philemon to make a decision he encourages him he 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 lovingly says hey think about this right think about um um about Onesimus your brother 
receive him again as a brother with love, with open arms. So th there is that, that aspect of trust, right? Of trust, Paul to Philemon, Philemon, uh, uh, I guess, Onesimus in Paul and in, in, and, in, and in Philemon of making that decision, I'm going back home and I'm going to be welcome with open arms and I'm going to be welcome without um, repercussions because of what I did, because of seeking freedom and then finding more than freedom, finding, finding a Jesus of liberation, finding a God that says what I did was, was for me to find, find God, find, find something better than what I already had or way better than what I had <laughs> in my life. Um, but I hear it, it's not simple. And the gospel shouldn't be simple. If it was simple, then then we wouldn't be in the situations that we are right now. Mm -hmm. We things like like uh, like bad things that happen and, and killings of people of color and slavery. You know, all of the then then these things wouldn't. Have, if it was simple, then Jesus didn't have to die. Then Jesus wouldn't have died. Then the sacrifice wouldn't. You know, all of that wouldn't have to happen. But 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 that's I guess in a way that's the beauty of it all, right? Because we want it so much, and we we love what 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 this gospel of love brings for us, that we go, that we're willing to trust <laughs> that that people around us are gonna welcome us back home. They're mm. gonna say yes, yes, come back. I got you. No matter what, no matter what happened, you are my brother and my sister. Yeah. But it's yeah. not simple. <laughs> it is powerful, though. I mean that that's. One, one thing, uh, Bishop, Sandy and I talked about this months ago, I think, in, in one of the earliest plannings of this, we were talking about, well, what if we did Philemon? And we kind of went, well, what's that? And what, what would that look like? And, and oh, well, you know, it's been used for pro-slavery and anti-slavery throughout yeah. the years. And Sandy and I had this really cool conversation of like, it is amazing that Black enslaved people praised the same God that their, uh, that their masters did, that the people who enslaved them did. And, and it didn't, it didn't turn into despair. It turned into more power. It turned into more, more hope, um, more um, salvation in a way that it's just doesn't make any sense, but it's remarkable. And um, that's a story that needs to be told like that. That's, that's, that is something that would affect our common life today. I think. Yeah. 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 Um... It's, it's why I love the spirituals, um, Dennis, when you said that. I mean, I just, I can, I can just pray them, um, the words, the, um, the, just the deep-seated, rooted hopefulness in the midst of daunting and unimaginable moments um, that somehow keep reaching out to God. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's so inspiring to me. Um, the stories and and you know I, I I also I also know that life sometimes is is really difficult and hard um, and to turn around and say you know I'm gonna just forgive and forget um, really can take time oh, yeah. it can take a long time um, I, I remember and I probably misquoted it or heard it uh, misquoted, but, you know, we're lucky often that our relationships don't make the front page. But um, I, I remember for a while there, they were all talking about the royal brothers, um, you know, and, and whether or not they were communicating and talking and how they looked at each other and, and whether or not there was any type of affection there. And, and I remember at one point, one of the brothers said that my relationship right now is space. Um, and, and, I, and I really, I held that because I know that sometimes in my life, really painful and difficult relationships needed, needed space, needed a, a time for, um, for both to, to come to an understanding um, so that there could be an integrity and authenticity in the reaching out. And and um, and for me, that was that was somewhat freeing um, because I wasn't ready yet. Mm. 
It takes time. I wasn't ready yet. Um, but one of the gifts that I think we do have is, is bringing those moments, that fracture, um, really to prayer. Um, it's again, it's why I need a community that's praying together, why I, why I need worship, why I need singing and, and, and voices that, that, that speak of joy and, and, and people dancing at times too and clapping as well. And, and um, because I, I need to somehow express from the depth of my being um, the truth of, of what's going on in my life. Mm. And I need others to help me with that. Mm. And, and I, what I love about um, this particular text is that it, it offers freedom. Mm -hmm. I think, Dennis, you really spoke of that well. It, it offers the individuals to have the freedom to make a decision that's rooted in their, in their belovedness and their love for Christ. Um, mm -hmm. And it gives them the space to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it, I mean, that, that, um, all the, all the different aspects that you brought, Bishop, it reminded me of, of the gospel this past Sunday. No, the epistle, was it? That talked about the different parts of the body and celebrate. I think that, I think in a way that's, that's what I think, I guess we can connect that to the, to the letter in a way, celebrating our diversity and celebrating who we are, all are um, um, in the function, you know, of, of all of us. I can't do the same things Dennis does. Of course not. Right. Oh no. Right. I can't, I can't do the same things that the I, bishop I, can. I can't do what Sandy does. That's right. That's more <laughs> important. That. Yeah. <laughs> but celebrating and acknowledging that we all can do so much more together. Yeah, that one of us can't do can't do it all or can't do everything well, um, because we, we're gifted in different ways. Yeah. And I think um, that's also kind of a reminder for us as a diocese, right, in each of our parishes that even whatever the situation we may be going through at this moment, um, because of leadership or because of um, situations that may be happening and even just through the pandemic. We all have a gift that we've been given by a loving God that we can um, give to our communities and go through this moment together that will help us um, get to the next point uh, stronger than we were. But we do that in community. And that is the key part, I, I, I think, uh, with all of this is, is that community that we keep, keep, keep telling the, the diocese, right? We keep, we keep preaching about community. We keep preaching about, uh, you know, welcoming people and, and being a strong community and, and building the beloved community. But that's it, celebrating the diversity of us all so that the body can work, so that the body of Christ, that, that God, that beloved community can actually be a, uh, a reality here. I love that both for the series and, and just for, you know, some of the convocation stuff we're trying that like, you know, first we talked about our history and our tradition. Last one was scripture. We're going to do more topics in the future. But the, the great thing about what you just said is that there's, there's no like default answer to either of those. There's, there's no default perspective. And, and when there is one, we're sort of looking to change that to say that it, it can't just be one part of the body that has the most say over what we name about these things or what works in community or what works in ministry and church and vestry and whatever. And so I thank you for that. I mean, I, I'm, that's the kind of thing that excites me is to see what other perspectives are out there, to see how churches that are five miles apart from each other do church maybe vastly differently in a way that we could learn from each other. And, um, and when that includes other voices, and voices that aren't normally heard as much, um, even better, and even more important for our work ahead. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, 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 a question for all of us, um, and and everybody on 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 Facebook, feel free to to add your questions and comments. We, we'd love to hear from you. Why is this letter, the second this our second session, right, of talking about uh, Philemon and uh, and Paul, uh, this letter from Paul? Why is this important now? In our context, why is this letter important, relevant to the Diocese of Bethlehem in this moment that we're in, 
in this in this new year. Uh, I, I guess thinking about the current climate with um, the world, but also the pandemic and and leaders across the world, decisions being made. Why is this letter something we can look to for guidance or other things? One of my favorite things about Philemon that that Tony talked about was the idea of one thing Paul was really savvy about and one thing he was really clever about was presenting an argument and a, and a perspective that was so sound that it was, it was as if there was no other way that would have worked. So he, he shows Philemon that slavery cannot work when brotherhood is an option. Mm. And what I think I hear hopefully God telling us through Philemon and, and scripture today in a, in this pandemic church of ours is um, that very well may apply to other structures. There may be things that we are so accustomed to and are so obvious in what we do as church that when we see a different perspective, we'll see that it, it, it wasn't even working in the before times, let alone now. <laughs> and I don't know that I have a laundry list of each one of those, what that looks like. But I do know that um, churches that are thriving are trying new things. Mm. Churches that are thriving are engaging scripture without fear. Amen. And churches that are thriving are not afraid of what happens next. And, and that the church in 2025 is going to look different than the church in 2018. That is vulnerable, but really spirit-led work. And I think I, I hear that in a place like Paul, and I, I sure hope it applies to our church today. Yeah, I, we, are, we are just so fractured. You know, I think for people of my age and um, who've been, you know, really walking this earth a, a while, they, they try to look back and say, has there ever been a time where we've, been, we've ever been so divided? You know, and, um, you know, I've got, a, I've got a fractured community I'll be walking with after this call. You know, it's, it's the reality of what we're, we're living in. Um, and, and the need for deeper relationships. And I, I, have to, I have to say, you know, if you're looking in the room, and everyone looks like you. Everybody sounds like you. Everyone has the same perspective as you are. Um, you know, we need to say there, there's there's a void here. We we've mm -hmm. got to find others. And why aren't others here among us? Um, because we desperately need their voices. Stephanie Spellers, I think, cracked that open for us right from the beginning when she really, you know, made some hard hard statements about. The church and how we think we're moving forward and then we realize that voices just are are not welcome and and um you know it, it really is an introspective time we we've all got to look deep within ourselves and say you know who am i unwilling to talk with to listen to um where am i digging my heels in and and just know that there's no future in it you know, our presiding bishop often talks about we've got a choice to make. I think, you know, he talks about this is a, you know, it's a winter night. I don't mm. know where it's going, but, but we, we've got to make a choice. And, you know, Paul was looking at some of the, the critical systemic issues in his time right. and saying, you know what, Christ transforms that. Mm. There is no slave. Um, and he's doing it in the midst of slavery and a lack of freedom. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And we have to we have to call out the same yeah. in love. Yeah. yeah. Barbara Gessner commented, "With the pers pervasive divisiveness in our country, we need to celebrate and promote unity within diversity." And I think Tony mentioned that he made a comment saying the goal or the call of the church is not that uh, uniformity is unity. Yeah. 
celebrating, like we've talked about, right? Celebrating all of the gifts that we have, everything that we are. Uh, look at here, uh, a, an, an immigrant from the Dominican Republic, a black woman, a, a person from, a bishop from New England. We have Dennis from, you know, Pennsylvania, but now in another part of, of the country, different experiences, different ages, but we've come together uh, to, to in, in, you know, in love yeah. to do this work, this mission, right? And celebrating that um, the diversity and creating unity. Charles says uh, it calls us. I guess this letter, this conversation, the message from Paul, it calls us to the importance of relationship. Paul, as a prisoner, gained a whole different perspective as not having freedom to be. And then asks the quick, the key question: Why is this so hard? <laughs> Why is this so hard? I think we make it difficult. I think, I think, I think, and I'm going to include myself in that too, because, you know, we're, we're all sinners. We, we all have our, our things. Um, we make it difficult and we try to, try to, not try to let not let God work in the world. I think we we may, we put too many obstacles, and we are afraid of 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 being vulnerable in the truth. I think a lot of times, thinking that if we do that, we're gonna lose we're gonna lose power. We're gonna lose um, all the things that we have. We're gonna. It's it, it's so much. I think there's so much fear of 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 losing things. Well, if we look at Philemon, he gained a brother. Yeah. He gained a brother and the family just got bigger. And I think that's what, I, I, I don't know. I think that's what comes to, to mind when I think of why is this so hard? Why is being in relationship with people that, are, that may look different than us so hard, that may love somebody that's diff that's that's of the same sex right or 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 whatever it may be why why is this so hard and i think it's it's us i think we're afraid of of that honest authentic uh, uh vulnerable relationship that we can have with people you know and 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 the fear that fear of, of losing something instead of 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 welcoming whatever that whatever that relationship may bring to to, to our lives but that's Sandy's. I, that's Sandy's idea. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about all, both of you, but uh, yeah. you know, life, life for me just continually reminds me of of how much I need a God, a God of mm. love. I mean, just when I think it's going right and everything's good, just when, just when I've got everything I need perfectly in order, chaos. You know, something, something, something comes my way, which, um, and, and each time it seems to teach me or turn me or make me go deeper. Um, and, you know, I, I need God. I need a savior. Amen. I mean, I try to do it on my own and boy, do I mess it up. Um, try to walk without a community and boy, do I get isolated. Uh, which is, I get it in this moment, why everybody's like, oh, it is so difficult, because it is, it's, we're in an isolating time. Um, it's hard. Life is hard. Um, that's why I need, I need Jesus in my life. Yeah. Definitely need Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I, with that, I think we've come to, to the end of this conversation, but we encourage all of you to, to do this. The same thing we're doing right now, just gather with other people and have a conversation about what you hear uh, here or outside um, of this conversation. Talk to people in your parishes, Re build that community with other people. Um, Again, you don't know people's stories until you listen to them, until you give them uh, room and space. Um, 
to to be heard and to um, and to share that love of Christ. And we encourage and, and um, hope that you all can um, listen again to the conversation we've had with uh, Dr. Tony Lewis and uh, Reverend Sidney and Reverend Bruce, uh, and hope that something something good can come from that conversation as well. Um, there's always something beautiful that can be uh, can be taken when when we're talking about a God of love and a God of justice and a God of peace. Um, any last thoughts from either of you before the bishop closes in prayer or in a blessing? Our next gathering, our next session will be February 10th, our, our third session for our common life. Uh, we're talking about, again, building God's beloved community uh, and the journey to be that uh, uh, beloved community. So we hope to see you there uh, on the 10th. We'll have all the information for you um, soon enough. Bishop? Let us pray. All powerful and ever-living God, shine with the light of your radiance on a people who live in the shadow of darkness. Let the dawn from on high break upon us, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Have a great night. See you soon. Uh, keep, keep commenting, keep asking your questions. Uh, this is the way that we stay connected and continue to have really important conversations with each other. See you soon. Thanks, folks.